I didn't have the impression that our chair was uh, that old, but I thought she's very wise, though. Um, we have all been acknowledged uh, today, perhaps with uh, one exception, um, and that is uh, my colleague uh, Luke Petzelt, who's sitting here at the front table, who has arranged for the EU funding of the uh, 9 in 3 project. Um, and I would very much like to acknowledge him here because he's done a lot of hard work and dedication to, to get us where we are here. And since we're acknowledging newcomers anyway, my wife has joined me here uh, to support the, uh, the Non in 3 project in her own right. So, <laughs> so um, ladies and gentlemen, um, some say that the living is learning, and a very wise man has said that change is the end result of all true learning. I have learned a lot, and uh, I hope that today's very interesting and captivating uh, events will ultimately contribute to much needed change at societal levels too. I learned, for instance, that pregnancy can actually be a catalyst for violence, and uh, that these worrying findings are backed up by international literature. I also learned that uh, women with disabilities uh, face double disempowerment uh, as a result of abuse and increased dependency. This is crucial knowledge um, for health and social services uh, professionals who are most likely to be confronted with such cases. And I hope that it will be that this will lead to doctors, to nurses, and professionals um, being better equipped to pick up signs of violence against uh, women uh, at the very early stages. Domestic violence is, is, of course, a complex problem that needs to be understood in its entire social context. And research is a very important part of it. As it, is, as it must um, improve our understanding of the nature and scope of the problem and its causes. Um, and this, hopefully, will then in turn help practitioners to improve their responses. Information sharing and an interdisciplinary approach are key here. And today's knowledge dissemination event I think was a prime example of this. Practitioners from all disciplines need access to knowledge. And these research findings, data, information, etc., need to be available on an ongoing basis. However, we should not forget that problem solving and solution building can include almost any means of assisting practitioners to work together, formally or informally, to improve responses to domestic violence. Taryn Bockmeyer shared some findings on the perspectives of men. <clears throat> we learned that men uh, often feel marginalized in discussions of domestic violence, but given the opportunity, they have a great deal to offer in generating solutions. The Caribbean as a whole is faced with the challenges of delineating the boundaries of families and redefining uh, domestic violence. Men must be included in these efforts, we have definitely learned. The research tells us that we need also to consider male victims of domestic uh, violence that there is very little support for them, and that we need to help the uh, perpetrators of violence and support them, um, and we need to help the perpetrators uh, at an early stage uh, before they face the courts. We also need to consider the role of parents that are over-punishing children, since this is where children have their first experience of violence. We know that when you're in a broken family, your role model is a violent male. Boys, they grow up believing that this is uh, the way they're supposed to act. 
And girls, they think that's fine too and acceptable for men to, to treat them like that. We hope that these debates will be picked up by civil society organizations and religious leaders present. Um, since one day, the key findings, since, uh, since, no, I didn't mean to say one day, since I meant to say, since one of the, the key findings is that um, the church plays a major role in preventing uh, violence. Dr. Joseph uh, set the scene for the second part of the event uh, by discussing the uh, links uh, between violence uh, in the home and violence in schools. Um, violence in, in schools have been regular features in the press, uh, leading predictably to calls for greater discipline, as we heard, and punishment for children. Um, but iron fist policies or clean sweep measures which ignore underlying causes can only aggravate the problems by reproducing the culture of violence. I have gone uh, public many times saying that uh, corporal punishment perpetuates violence rather than sorting out any sort of lack of discipline. When I publicly fought uh, corporal punishment in schools, or when I've defended uh, LGBT rights, some observers uh, have grabbed their pen in the papers and have called this uh, culturally insensitive. And some people have even said that it's the devil's work. My view is a bit different because when I defend human rights, to be honest with you, I can hear the little angels uh, playing their harps, you see. So we don't all agree on these things. But never mind that. Um, research says that corporate pun corporal punishment is harmful and no use. So who cares about calling names? And I think it's important that we are all uh, steadfast in this regard. Inspired by uh, Dr. Joseph, uh, you can, in fact, say that one can spend a lifetime trying to forget a few minutes of your childhood. And we know that it's easier to build up a child or adolescent than to repair it as an adult. And should we only be able to save one child from going through what others went through, then it's already been worthwhile. While our societies must tackle violent behaviors between adults, we must also try to change the attitudes and values that children learn when they witness these behaviors so that we can stop the cycle of violence. The most influential of all educational factors is the conversation in a child's home. Often boys are not raised to be men, but raised not to be women. Boys are taught that girls and women are less than dot dot dot. It's important for men to stand up, um, not only to, to stop men's, other men's violence against women, but to teach young men a broad definition of masculinity that includes being um, empathetic, loving, and nonviolent. This is the purpose of the computer game that's being developed by Nonin3. We, in this case here, um, can I say something a little bit uh, tongue in cheek, if you don't mind? Um, I would like to apologize to uh, Dave Smith, where are you? There. Um, that the EU taxpayers could only provide a shoestring budget to the development of your wonderful game and not the half a billion dollars that you're insinuating. Uh, I apologize for that, but on the other hand, uh, we have saved three years of EU development assistance to the entire Caribbean uh, uh, region by not following your lead, so uh, perhaps it wasn't. <laughs> Um, so, anyway, that was the tongue-in-cheek. 
We, um, we all hope that in the same way that some computer games uh, breed violence, the game designed to, to generate empathy and awareness about the consequences of violence may, may actually help to prevent it. Um, we took a bit of a risk uh, when we decided to, to break new grounds with this innovative approach of uh, a persuasive uh, game in that field. And um, I'm very uh, glad that the project intends to, to carry out a rigorous scientific assessment of its effectiveness and impact in the end, so that we can learn something about that as well. Evaluation of existing strategies and programs is perhaps the most important information-related tool for practitioners, whether related to criminalization, to treatment, to prevention, or to training. Unfortunately, still too few initiatives are being evaluated, but this, this information will be crucial in re refining current and designing future responses. We also heard about the, the youth today, and it's important to remember that domestic violence does not only happen to adults. And 40% 40, uh, 40 of, of girls aged 14 to uh, 17 um, seem to know someone their own age who has been hit or beaten by a boyfriend or approximate or and, 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 and I also understand that approximately one in five female high school students report being physically or sexually abused by a dating um, partner. Some of the figures we had today were higher than that, frighteningly higher I must add. This is exactly why I am so excited about this project's innovative uh, approach for early and continuous education using a medium which is likely to appeal to children and young people as the key preventive tool and bringing in social media too. Education can, at an early stage, confront attitudes which allow violence to occur and may examine victim blaming ideologies, the characteristics and behavior of victims and perpetrators, and the choices they face, ideas about family life, male privilege and privacy, the exploitation of women in the media, and of course, not least, the glorification of violence in the media that we heard about as well. In the final pre pre presentation, we heard from, um, from Ryan Green and, and colleagues about how the project is, is building momentum through the use of social media. Um, um, and um, I thought that was very promising as well. With its dynamic social media presence, None in Three has the potential to, to increase the spread of its message across all sections of society. Indeed, it's uh, it's through a sort of a whole society approach that domestic violence can truly be tackled. And here comes another important point. Violence against women is a crime with an impact far beyond the immediate moment of violence. Violence against women impacts us all, even those of us who never, ever personally experienced it. It impacts the families of these uh, victims. It impacts our society. It impacts our everyday lives. We all pay for these con consequences. Not only figuratively speaking, domestic violence is not something um, that can be neatly uh, compartmentalized into what happened in the private sphere. Domestic violence can affect the victims or a survivor's participation in the workforce, including their ability to find work and to attend and stay at work, as well as their performance and productivity while at work, and of course their participation in society in general. The, reason, the reasons for, for this uh, are varied, as we've heard, but may include the, 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 the physical and psychological harm of violence, uh, the need to attend medical and legal appointments, seek safer accommodation or, or care for themselves or affected children, a disrupted uh, uh, history of work, and behavior 
by the perpetrator that seeks to prevent a victim leaving their sphere of control. All of this, my point is, has got a huge cost for society. And in my opinion, domestic violence will take an important chunk out of the gross domestic product of small island development states that can ill afford it. So take that. People have the mistaken sense that domestic violence only happens in rundown places, uh, that it's a working pro uh, class problem, angry, drunken, violent men. But we know better now. Um, it's across all society, no matter what education, income, environment, quality of life, class, the work that you do, it's everywhere, regardless of age, race, religion, sexual orientation, and, and gender identity. Um, so I would say that um, during my, the four years that I've spent in the, in the Caribbean, I have actually made domestic violence our major human rights priority in this region. And this is why we are putting our money where our mouth is. Although resources are, are important, I have to say, and that's important, they are not the entire solution at all. We should not underestimate the power of community-based local strategies which have the added advantage of increased accessibility. And that is something that the EU can, can help to entice, but we cannot bring it about. Only the communities can do that. Then I would also like a little bit chung in cheekish again to bring out a subject which is, uh, which is rather different. Um, and that is um, Brexit. Now, you didn't think about that, did you now? <laughs> and um, the reason why I do that is because I know that the project has, in fact, uh, that is, uh, non in three, been wondering what the implication of the British referendum would be on the 23rd of June. Well, the official EU message, uh, which I am allowed to say aloud on Brexit, is that the European Union deeply regrets the outcome of this referendum, but nevertheless, we always respect democratic decisions. And the, but the important thing is here that until the UK leaves the European Union, um, the EU law continues to apply to and within the UK, both when it comes to rights and obligations, um, and this means that nothing is likely to change within the next couple of years or so. So given the relatively short implementation period of the non in 3 project until February 2018, it is indeed highly, highly unlikely that this project will be affected by the Brexit vote in any way. Um, beyond this, who knows what will happen um, when it comes to the relationship between uh, the UK and uh, the European Union. Perhaps it will be much less traumatic than some people think. Um, but um, if I wasn't leaving uh, the region, not the Union, I'm staying in the European Union, but I'm leaving the region in a few weeks, and if I wasn't leaving the region in a few years' time, when my tour of duty as ambassador is over, I would certainly recommend that the EU, in whatever configuration, with or without the UK, continues to fight uh, against domestic violence with the financial instruments that we will have uh, at our disposal in the future. So on behalf of the European Union, I really wish Adele and her team every success as they move forward with this project, which will hopefully um, go beyond the status of pilot project, as you said earlier, Adele. I thank you 
the shareholders, governments, departments, agencies, and civil society. The government is represented here. Allow me um, not to miss this opportunity to say that no amount of legislation can replace well-funded specialist support services and uh, establish clear structures and protocols. And that uh, thanks goes to our chair as well, who is involved in new structures. Um, however, I will not um, leave this place without one final request to all of us, which is also close to some of the things that Dr. Joseph said. Talk about what you heard here. I'm not saying it as loudly as she did, but I say it just as intensely. Talk about what you heard here. And not least, go public. Go public in open debates that draw attention to what we have to say here, to our messages today. And more press. Get the press involved. Millions of people are abused each day, and many of them find their way to a, to a different, more peaceful life. If you're a victim or a survivor, we want you to be one of those people who speak out. You have the right to live without physical, sexual, verbal, mental, or emotional violence, or the fear of such abuse. You are not alone. We hear you, we see you, and we want to help you. If you want change, you not only have to understand through research, etc., you also have to speak loudly and publicly. Normally, I, um, I always um, start or end my speeches um, with a little uh, a joke of sorts. But when it comes to domestic violence, I believe that that is no joke. So if you don't mind, I'll skip the humor this time. Thank you very much. <laughs>